the I will uh, start the, my talk is an endoscopic keyhole anterior transpetrosal approach to petrous regions. Uh, our institute, uh, Osaka Metropolitan University, is one of the largest carbon center in Japan. So, as presented uh, uh, my mentor, Kenji Ohata, in our university, Professor Hakuba started a microscopic uh, skull base approach, and my mentor Ohata and I follow his technique. So I understand that uh, to reject the petrochimal meningioma or some uh, skull base meningioma or region, microscopic, the skull base approach is very effective. So I understand the importance of the microscopic skull base approach. So our team uh, published many paper to the many journal. But recently, endoscope also can offer a very panoramic clear view around the deep seat area. So this time I will show our endoscopic keyhole anterior transpetrosal approach around petrous apex. This is a, a neuroanatomy of this approach. Usually we put the skin incision around the temporal area and put the craniotomy with the size of the about 3.5 centimeter, like this. And then we insert the endoscope uh, around the uh, middle fossa. This is a trigeminal nerve covered the dramata, and this is a middle meningeal artery. Brain retraction is usually very uh, minimum, but we can offer the wide view around the petrous apex. We can identify the GSPA under the facial simulation, and then I cut the dramata medial side of GSPA. So. This bone structure is a Kawase's triangle. We usually drill out this bony structure under endoscope. We can open the Meckel cave and reach the posterior fossa. So through this approach, uh, we can completely expose the trigeminal nerve from Meckel cave to brainstem. So if the region located here, we can resect the tumor by the endoscopic a keyhole anterior transpetrosal approach. I will show the several cases. This patient referred to us with a, a chief complaint of uncontrollable trigeminal neuralgia after gamma knife. But uh, the region is not large, small, so we choose a less invasive procedure to reject such kind of the tumor. I will show our surgical video. This is a right temporal fossa. I make the craniotomy with a size of 3.5 centimeter. And then I insert the endoscope around the middle fossa. This is a trigeminal nerve covered dramata. And this is a GSPN. We stimulate the GSPN and identify the location. And then cut the dramata medial side of GSPN. So this bone structure is a Kawase's triangle. Now I expose uh, the trigeminal impression. This is a trigeminal nerve, and this is a trigeminal impression. After I expose the uh, uh, Kawase's triangle, I carefully drill out the petrous apex using the uh, special drill. This drill. The cover, the shaft is completely covered. So we can save drilling the, even through the very small surgical corridor. After bone work, tumor already detached. So uh, tumor already devascularized. So we can gently dissect the tumor from the surrounding structure. We also cut the uh, SPS and also cut the tentorium and expose the fourth nerve, medial side of the tentorium like this. So surgical procedure is a very similar as a microscopic anterior transpetrosal approach. We dissect the tumor inferior surface of the tentorium 
And finally, all tumor was successfully dissected out like this. This case, uh, tumor compressed uh, SCA. And SCA compressed uh, trigeminal nerve like this. So we decided to mobilize the SCA of the trigeminal nerve in this uh, surgery. Now, SCA safely mobilized and then fixed it like this. And then we insert the endoscope more deep side. We can observe the six nerve like this. And then also we can observe the uh, seven and eight nerve like this. So finally, all tumor was successfully resected out through the keyhole approach. This is a post-operative CT scan. Petra's apex was a limitary drilled out and the tumor was successfully rejected out through the small corridor. This is another case of the trigeminal schwannoma, occupies a Meckel cave and then extends to posterior fossa. But we can apply the same procedure to this tumor. This is also a surgical video. The size of craniotomy is almost same, about three centimeter. And then I expose a coarsest triangle and then remove the tumor subcapsularly. I think the trigeminal schwannoma is a good candidate uh, of this approach. So we can safely dissect it out this tumor through a very small uh, corridor. Tumor was successfully dissected out without any deterioration of symptom. This is another case of the trigeminal schwannoma. The size is not large, but this tumor occupies a mechanical cave and posterior fossa and also extend to the infratemporal fossa. But if we choose an endoscopic approach, we can reach three parts, mechanical cave, posterior fossa and infra temporal fossa through the keyhole uh, window. So I choose the endoscopic uh, approach. The size of craniotomy is almost same, about three centimeter like this. And then we insert the endoscope around the middle fossa. I stimulate the dura mater to identify the GSPN and then expose the causes triangle and then dory out the Kawasaki triangle. This is a, a endoscopic a keyhole anterior transpetrosal approach. After doing out the Kawasaki triangle, I open the Meckel cave. So now I completely open the Meckel cave and expose the tumor. This is a, a trigeminal schwannoma. So subcapsular dissection was uh, enough for a safe resection of the tumor. I additionally drill out the petrous apex to reach the posterior fossa. After resection of the tumor around the mechanical cave, we uh, have to go to posterior fossa. After opening the uh, mechanical cave and coagulate the SPS. Now we are reach the posterior fossa. We carefully dissect the tumor from the brainstem, and this is a normal trigeminal fiber. We preserve the normal fiber and carefully continue the subcapsular dissection under endoscope. And then finally, we dissect out around posterior fossa, like this. And then we move to the infratemporal fossa. Surgical the corridor is not large, but 30 degree endoscope can offer a very good look down view to infratemporal fossa. So we can continue the subcapsular dissection and remove the tumor piece by piece. Uh, under the endoscope, we can get good magnified view. So uh, we can gently remove out the tumor with preservation of the normal fiber of trigeminal nerve. Then finally, all tumor was rejected out. This is a brainstem. We completely reject the tumor around the posterior fossa. 
this is a post-operative MRI. The tumor in the medial K, posterior fossa, and the infratemporal fossa was successfully resected out through three centimeter keyhole approach and the endoscope. This is another case of a recurrent chondrosarcoma associated with osteogenesis imperfect. Patient shows a severe vaginal invagination. So the angle of the petrous stitch is very stiff. So to see the upper margin of the tumor, we choose the endoscopic keyhole approach. This is a surgical view. We uh, gently uh, elevate the temporal uh, lobe upwards and then expose the tentorial edge, a uh, host nerve and a trigeminal nerve. And then we continue the safe resection piece by piece. This case tumor was very hard, but endoscope can offer good view between the tumor and brain cell. This is a trochlear now. We reject it out. Uh, we dissect the tumor piece by piece, and uh, endoscope can offer very clear magnified view around the uh, brain cell. So we can successfully dissect it out like this. Uh, all tumor was uh, successfully dissected out through the three centimeter keyhole approach under endoscope. This is a trigeminal nerve uh, preserved, post nerve, of course, preserved. This is a post-operative MRI. All tumor was successfully dissected out. This is another case of the petrous apex, a small petroclimal meningioma. During the follow-up period, the size of tumor rapidly increased, but the patient age was very old. So I choose a less invasive keyhole approach to resect such kind of the tumor. Surgical procedure always same. The, uh, we insert the endoscope around the middle fossa and cut the Kawase's triangle and also cut the tentorium like this. And then dissect the tumor from the brainstem like this. Finally, we rejected out most part of the tumor successfully. This is a post-operative MRI. Tumor was successfully dissected out. So, of course, uh, this is a new procedure, but uh, if the, we select the good case, this procedure is very less invasive approach to the region around the petrous apex. Thank you for attention. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Guto, for uh, this uh, excellent presentation. Is there any question from panelists? Uh, no, I would just like to say thank you so much, Professor. This was a very informative lecture for me, especially because I'm just a first year resident. Professor, can I ask a question? This is uh, excellent, elegant surgery, beautifully demonstrated. I'm not asking about trigeminal neuralgia, but for petroclival meningiomas that you showed, uh, is there an advantage of this approach to a, a possibly keyhole approach through the posterior fossa, petrosigmoid? Mm -hmm. Is there an advantage of your approach for this? I, I know trigeminal and neuralgia are different. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, most advantage of this approach is it's easy to medial side of the trigeminal nerve and also uh, reach the ventral side of the petrosal vein. If we choose the keyhole suboxital approach, we have to care the uh, petrous vein or uh, seven and eight now behind the endoscope. So it's a bit a very difficult procedure. And uh, this procedure bone work a bit complicated, but very safe corridor to the uh, ventral side of the brain stem or around the petrous apex. So I prefer to use uh, this uh, procedure to small petrous apex region. Thank you for good question. Yeah, excellent, yeah, I agree, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Professor Goto, for this excellent, uh, informative uh, lecture. And now we will shift to the next speaker, uh, Professor Tio. Please start sharing your screen. Yes, 